Uh, welcome. Um, we today uh, we're going to cover cover Dalton's law of partial pressures and then the ideal gas law um, and uh, use that knowledge to solve some questions. Um, so uh, you we we already went through the Boyle's law, Charles law, Gay Lusaxon's law, and then we combine them. You've worked on some questions. Um, we'll work on more questions, um, but this video is really for uh, understanding Dalton's law of partial pressure. I would get that one's the less challenging one, and then using the ideal gas law. So, all right, let's get right to it. Uh, so, this first part is really well, let's just take some notes. Um, not a whole lot of notes in it, but uh, here we go. So Dalton's law of partial pressure states the sum of the partial pressures of all the components in a gas is equal to the total pressure. Um, that's a lot of jibber jabber for, hey, the total pressure equals all the pressures we add up. If we have 10 uh, different gases, we add the pressures of all those up, that'll equal the total, um, not uh, real, hard thinking um, a concept. Uh, you wanna add up uh, how many total points you got on something? All you do is add them up, that's the total. Um, obviously it can get a little bit more complicated. Um, let's look at a question that uh, um, reminds me of a lot of math. So here we go. The pressure of a mixture of three gases in a fixed container is 300 kPa or kilopascals. Now, there's a couple things that are important here. I'm going to underline them. We have three gases, and it's in a fixed container of 300 kilopascals. That kilopascals is our total pressure. So I'm going to start my equation down here. Um, and if you will, this is our total pressure. So that's everything. And I'm going to just write it without um, the units, so we have 300 kPa, and that's gonna equal all the other ones. Now, here's where it's like a, a tricky algebra question. I'm not so tricky, we've got this. If nitrogen molecules are three times the number of hydrogen molecules, and oxygen molecules are two times the number of hydrogen molecules, what is the partial pressure of all three gases? Well, in this one, I'm gonna consider hydrogen to be X. That's a good start. That's one of the gases plus the next one. Now, it doesn't matter which one you do. And the reason why I chose hydrogen as X is because of the other ones, nitrogen and oxygen, refer to hydrogen. So nitrogen was three times Hydrogen. Well, if hydrogen was X, this would be 3X. And oxygen was two times that number, so that would be 2X. Now we continue with our algebra. We got 300 on our left. Uh, and on the right, we're going to add these up. This would be 1X plus 3X plus 2 would give us 6X divide by six on both sides. Now I'm gonna move this up. Um, let's see, uh, 300 divided by six should be 50. So X equals 50. Now remember I said X was hydrogen. So hydrogen's pressure, um, we can write over here, 50 is hydrogen pressure. Now we can just go back and remember that our nitrogen was three times. So three times 50 is 150. And that 150 pressure was um, our nitrogen. And then our oxygen was two times 50, which would be 100. And that would be oxygen. Again, to double check, we need a total of 300. If we add these all up, do we get 300? Absolutely. So this is uh, using Dalton's law um, and a little bit of algebra 
uh, to solve a problem. So um, we'll see some other questions with uh, Dalton's partial law of partial pressures as we go, um, but uh, that's the basis of it. Uh, at any time, if you need to pause and go back, um, please do so. Um, again, I'll apologize for the writing on the screen, um, but I feel it's the best uh, way to be able to show you guys without me being there. All right, so let's move on to the ideal gas law. So um, the important of the ideal gas law is it really puts all of these together. Um, we could take Boyle's law, and now that we know the ideal gas law, we don't need to know it. It's it's in there. It's the the equation shows it. Um, so it, how are things behaved in terms of P, V, T, and N? Now, if you're reading the notes, it says using the KMT, that's kinetic molecular theory. Um, and that was in our first lecture. Remember, kinetic is the movement of stuff. Now, I would say the important stuff is to understand that P stands for pressure, V is volume, T is, in t is temperature, and what does temperature have to be in? Yep, you got it, Kelvin. And then N is the number of moles. So, and we can find moles a bunch of different ways or use moles to find some things. Our new thing here is our constant. Um, this constant you can find in different um, uh, units, but for us, we are going to use this as our constant. I will refer back to this a lot. Notice that to use this number, we need to be in ATM. We need to be in liters. We need to be in moles. And our temperature has to be in Kelvin. So I'll, when we go through questions, I'll keep repeating it, kind of like, hey, are we in the correct unit? Are we in the correct unit? Um, this is very important because that's where we cause some problems is I'll give you a pressure in um, kilopascals and not ATM. But when you use R, it's got to be in those units. So if it was me, I'm going to write that on the side of my sheet of paper, uh, or especially when I'm doing my homework, have it on there. Most of the homework already has it on there. And I believe it's also on the back of your periodic table. All right, so uh, the ideal gas law works almost all the time. The two times it doesn't work is high pressure or very low temperatures. Um, and I'll give you the reasons for them. Obviously, it says um, as you increase the pressure, it becomes, it becomes difficult to these particles to have their own volume. They're getting too squished together. Um, and that obviously violates the kinetic molecular theory that they said that particles have no volume of their own. So um, this will violate it. And then again, at lower temperatures, um, particles will start to have an attraction force toward each other. And the kinetic molecular theory assume that gas particles exert no attractive force to each other. Um, we don't deal with those too much, but it's good to know um, tests and quizzes, that's a little concept question there. Um, I would know those two for sure and why. So again, um, if I go too fast with the notes, trying to save some time in the video, go ahead and just pause it and uh, get those copied down. All right, let's apply our knowledge to these questions. And here's, I would say, question number one in our notes. It states, let me get that out of our way. Uh, how many molecule, excuse me, how many moles, that's important, we wanna know moles, of hydrogen gas will fill a weather balloon when the volume is 250 liters at a pressure of 0 0.50 ATM with a temperature of a minus 10 degrees Celsius? Well, the key already, I already uh, boxed it in, it's moles. Um, I know that PV equals NRT, that I know that N is the number of moles. And so that's what I'm gonna try to find. Now I'll go through and see if I've got everything. Do I have a pressure? I do, 0.50. 
is it in the correct unit to use with R? Yep, absolutely, we need atmospheres. So I'm gonna write that down. We got 0 0.50 and I'm gonna take the, uh, brief, uh, the, uh, the unit off just for the sake of uh, the sloppiness and the writing. Um, and now next, V is volume. Do I have a volume? I certainly do, 250. And is it in the correct units, Mr. Foss? Yep, it is, we need in liters. That will equal N, which is what we're solving for. And R is a constant, we gotta start memorizing this, have it written down someplace, 0 0.0821. And now temperature, is temperature in the correct units? It is not. How do we get it to Kelvin? If we remember from before, we're gonna add 273 to it. So 273 plus a negative 10 is 263. So we can throw that temperature now that it's in the correct units in there. Now we gotta do a little bit of algebra. Um, let's look at our left side. If we take 0 0.5 times 250, I get 125. This will equal N times 0 0.0821 times 263. Little bit of rounding here, but I got 21.59. Now you can check my math. I may be off, but the concept hopefully is right and hopefully I'm not wrong. Now again, to find N, what do we wanna to do to both sides? We're gonna divide both sides by 21.59. And I get a final answer of 5.8. And what does N equal? N equals moles. It does ask for hydrogen gas. So if we wanted to be perfect, we could put H2 up there. So here is a, a good question, a basic ideal gas law. Um, using PV equals NRT. Um, I'm gonna use the word plug and chug. Um, we just gotta find uh, where each of them fit in um, and making sure our unit. So, um, and uh, if we're talking sig figs, I would say that 5.8 is correct. It has two sig figs. Um, the degrees Celsius, we could uh, argue about one, um, but I would you'd rather use uh, my ATM with that. But if you would round it to six, I would know that what you're doing. All right, pause the video if you need to. Let's move on to the next one. So before I begin this next one, um, you have your notes and I want you, uh, to change something on there. On yours, I think the notes say 15 grams. Change that right now to um, 150, okay? All right, here we go. The gaseous hydrocarbon, a gaseous hydrocarbon weighs 150 grams. It occupies a volume of 131 liters at 29 degrees Celsius and at 734 millimeters of mercury. What is the molar mass of this compound? Um, don't panic, we know what the molar mass is. Let's write our units right up here, think about it. If I would ask for the molar mass, how do you find it, what are the units? Yeah, awesome job. Molar mass is grams, divided by moles. Well, if we look in the question, we already have half the answer. That's what we talked about before. We had to change that number. So we have 150 grams. That goes right down there. We just have to solve for what is the mole. Well, we know how to use PV equals NRT. Let's write it down. And again, we're searching for moles, which is uh, N, so now we just gotta put our numbers in, making sure we're in the correct units of everything. Um, let's start on the left. We have pressure. 
um, 734 millimeters of mercury um, is a pressure, but it is not the correct pressure we want. We need, yep, ATM. So here's some conversions we learned before. Uh, 734 and there is 760 in one ATM. So there's the little dimensional analysis, if you will. Um, when we do that, we're gonna get a number just under one. Um, and I got 0.966. And that would be my ATM. And now I can plug that in here. So 0.966. Um, next is volume, and we can see volume is in liters. That is the correct unit. The only time that I, I can remember uh, having anything different is maybe milliliters. We can change that. We're solving for N. R is our constant, 0 0.0821, and then our temperature. Again, we got to do a little bit of changing with our temperature. Um, because it's not in Kelvin, 273 plus 29, that will change it to our Kelvin. And when I do this, I get 302. So there's our temperature. Maybe you'd label that for us. And now we're kind of at the same point we're at um, in the last question. So if I multiply the left side, 0.966 times 131, I get 126.546, not rounding yet. And that's gonna equal N times our, our constant, 0 0.0821 times 320, and I get, 24.79 and get n by itself, divide both sides by the 24.79 and I get an answer of 5.1. That equals n or the number of moles. Now, I see a lot of times where people will stop right there, but that's not the answer to the question. The question asks for molar mass. And again, we put this up here. It's in grams per mole. So let's finish it. We know we have 150 grams of this substance. And that is 5.1 moles. So grams divided by moles, 150 divided by 5.1. I get... 29. Point, I think it's 15. Let's uh, double check Mr. Foss's math. Hundred and fifty divided by five point one. Yep, twenty nine point four one grams per mole. So there's our final answer. Kind of a cool way we can use the ideal gas law to find the molar mass of a substance, um, and not just a substance, but a gas. Um, so we can find out, hey, if this gas is a, a deadly gas um, and find the molar mass and stuff from there. So kind of a, a unique way to find um, the identity of a gas. So there's question number two. Let's keep going. Um, and we're gonna use dimensional analysis now in the next question to uh, help solve. Um, the next one. So here I have, it says 1.0 kilograms of calcium um, carbonate. It decomposes to form carbon dioxide and calcium oxide. How many liters, there's our key, of carbon dioxide are produced? Well, that's good. Um, if we look at all our numbers, I feel pretty confident. Um, the one thing we have to remember is it wants carbon dioxide. And what are we starting with? Not 
carbon dioxide. But we know how to get to carbon dioxide by using our dimensional analysis. Um, first, let's write this out. Calcium carbonate decomposes into carbon dioxide and calcium oxide. Um, that lo should look familiar or you like might have remembered it. Um, it was on a test and quiz. Um, now this uh, really quickly is balanced one to one to one. So that really helps out. Now we want to take our kilogram and I'm gonna do every step in here. Um, I'm gonna move this a little bit over make sure I have plenty of room. We have 1.0 kilograms of calcium carbonate and we gotta get to um, carbon dioxide. My first step is one kilogram equals a thousand grams. Now I can go from my grams to moles by using the molar mass. And the molar mass of calcium carbonate is 100.08 grams to one mole. Now, if I had a lot more room, I'd hopefully be good and be labeling, but this next step I'll label. We have one mole of calcium carbonate. That's where we're in. And we want to get to moles of CO2, which in this case is a one-to-one. -one. Now, we can end right there. And the reason why we can end right there and not go to grams um, is because to find liters, we need the N number. And the N is the number of moles, not the number of grams. So don't go too far. Um, and so when I do this math, I get 9.99 .99 moles of CO2. All right. So that's all the... Uh, information we had to find in front. Now let's solve this bad boy. We're going to use PV equals NRT. Um, and we look at our pressure. We can find it up there. 1.03 ATM. Is it in the correct units? Absolutely. Um, our volume, where is that? Oh, that's what we're looking for. We just solved for N. So N is 9.99. R is our constant, 0 0.0821, and our temperature, uh, 951 degrees Celsius. You know it, we've got to change that. Let's put this over to the side. 273 plus 951. Whew, that's hot. Um, that's 1,224 um, degrees Kelvin. Whew, that's really hot. All right. So when we do our algebra, I'm going to times 9.99 times 0 0.0821 times 1,224. And when I do that, I get 994.85. That's going to equal our other side, doing all my algebra. And then I want to get V by itself for the volume. So I'm going to divide both sides by 1.03. And I'm running out of room in the bottom, so I'm going to move it over here. I get a volume of... 965.87, not really worrying too much about the rounding in that case. So uh, again, we're using PV equals NRT to solve something, but we're also using our past information that we've learned. Number one, um, what type of reaction it is, balancing that reaction, knowing the names of formulas, 
dimensional analysis, and now adding PV equals NRT into it. So uh, you can see how chemistry can be really awesome as we start gathering all this stuff together and can be quite challenging um, when we got to put the pieces together. I would really uh, um, argue about like making sure we label uh, where we're at, what do we want to get to and all that stuff. So uh, be picky about your labels um, when you do it. All right, let's hit our last question. The atmosphere of Venus is mostly carbon dioxide. The pressure is 100 atm and the temperature is 460 degrees Celsius. How many grams of carbon dioxide are in one liter under these conditions? Mr. Foss loves to do this. How many grams of carbon dioxide? Um, now in this question, we don't have to do a balanced chemical um, equation. We're doesn't give us something else, what gives us everything in carbon dioxide, but we need to get to grams of there. Now, going back, the only way we can get to grams of things is from moles. Well, PV equals NRT, N is the number of moles, so let's do this. PV equals NRT. And again, we're looking for uh, N. So I'm gonna look at my pressure, double check. It is in the correct units. Volume is an easy one, one liter, that's nice. N is the number we're looking for. R is 0 0.0821. And now the temperature here, um, yep, we've gotta change that. 460 degrees Celsius, we gotta add 273. And when I do that, I get 733. Six. Is that correct? Uh, three, seven. Yep, that's good. Sorry, just double checking my math. Um, and now we can do our algebra. 100 times 1 is still going to be 100. That's going to equal n times. Um, 0 0.0821 times 733, and I get 60, oh, my writing's bad here, let's double check it, 0 0.0821 times 733, and I get 60.17. Um, continuing on with our algebra, Going to divide both sides by 60.17. And I get a number that n equals 1.66. Now remind me, everyone, what is n? That's moles. And we're talking about CO2. Does that answer the question that I asked? No, we got to get to grams. Always go back before you think you're done, go back. What's the question asking? Now we know how to go from moles to grams. So we're going to use the molar mass. And we know in one mole of CO2, there is, we can look this up on the periodic table, but it's 44.01 grams of CO2. So now we do our math, 1.66 times 44.014, and I get 73.14 grams of CO2. As long as I've labeled correctly, that answers the question. So um, there are the notes of there. Um, we'll have a worksheet that you can finish after this and a worksheet for uh, the next day. So um, good luck and uh, we'll see you when I get back.